they were approved by the county for apartment or multifamily units. The developers from Indiana or Illinois, one of those, and they want to do um, apartments, but also do some commercial in the front. And it had a when it was approved by the county, it's supposed to have a really nice thoroughfare, mixed-use project, so it won't be just strip commercial. And you see the picture at the bottom where you've got the kind of the apartments in the back and like a um, patio kind of area with some commercial where people could go and, and enjoy the outdoors. So we're working with them. They're coming in soon with an application, uh, but we, we don't have an official one yet. And then there's a small property, this little strip, 10 acre strip that is um, on Three Oaks and Williams that is, um, you can see it, it's next to the, um, I forget the name of that, the residential subdivision, but um, it was approved by the county for commercial use, which seems like a very weird location for commercial. So DR Horton is looking at purchasing that. They came in to meet with us and they um, would like to do kind of a villa concept, maybe 40, 40 units in there instead of the commercial. So that's got to be rezoned and that'll have to go to planning, zoning, design board and then to the village council for approval. Uh, but it does seem that the single family is more compatible than what they had with the strip commercial. Uh, and then here's the big question mark that I've been recently getting all the calls about. Uh, the corner of Three Oaks and Estero Parkway up by the Rookery. Uh, what's going on with that? The, uh, what I can tell you is that the flood maps were recently changed. The property zone, I think, by Alan Freeman. They tried to get the flood maps changed because the flood maps are usually very generalized and not, uh, not always accurate. I know the flood maps were recently changed, so it changed the floodway a little bit, uh, made a little bit more developable land, and now they're selling it. So we've had a lot of inquiries from people that want to do different uses, and of course apartments always comes up because that's the hot market right now. So uh, the property, though, is surprisingly that whole vacant piece is owned commercial by the county. Again, it's commercial, which is a very big traffic generator. So we, we were looking, talking to some people about maybe doing a mix of residential and a little bit of commercial, which will be better traffic wise. But again, they, you know, everybody wants a high density because property is expensive in Estero. So we're, we're trying to keep the density to a minimum and we're mindful of these, we've got these two-story buildings, so we don't want you know, four-story buildings right next to two-story buildings. So we've been talking to some potential purchasers about that, telling them those are, are our concerns. So um, again, that is just very, very preliminary, but I know everybody that lives next to it is worried about the flooding because you know when Irma came, that was a giant lake, and you couldn't even get down Three Oaks. So, you know, we're mindful of that, and we are telling anybody that purchases that that that's going to be a very big issue. So, um, I think that might be. Oh no, and car washes, just as I mentioned, car washes seem to be big. We've got one that is coming in next to Mr. Tequila on Corkshrew Road, uh, and then there's one over by Tidewater. It's right south of this, um, it used to be Cube Smart, I think it's public storage now. Um, both of them preliminarily had architecture that would make you scream. You know, this is like one of them looked like the Jetsons, I think, that landed from outer space. Um, so they're both kind of working on the architecture because neither one was um, anything to write home about. But um, those are um, one of them has an application in the one next to Tidewater. I think the other one is still working on theirs. So those are going to be a little bit controversial because they're noisy and they're next to neighbors. So um, we're also working and we've asked them to reach out to the neighbors in Tidewater. And that may be. Oh, the last one I forgot. I'm sorry to take so long here. So the last one is our, what we think is exciting is the property that the village purchased. Uh, corkscrew in 41, 62 acres, and we're looking at um, some open space uses. So the council has just told us now to look at the 30 acres south of um, Estero River, and we're gonna rezone that to uh, parks and recreation category because uh, right now it's zoned for pretty intense development. It's zoned mixed use plan development. It could have apartments, you know, multifamily, single family, commercial, uh, it's pretty much got almost everything except the meatpacking plant allowed for it. 
So we are doing an amendment to change the comprehensive plan and the rezoning on the south part of the river. On the north part, we're still looking at that because you know, we want some, we want to keep, retain the kayak business and anything that's river related, maybe look at some type of restaurant from the north side and then we don't really know what we're gonna do on the north side. The north side doesn't have really any environmental value. The south side has some historic structures and, some, and a lot of huge heritage trees and a wetland, so it's got the environmental value. So we're looking at that. The north side is gonna be you know, to be looked at later. And the first phase of the, uh, will be trails, which we're just starting on. Okay, so that's it. Final. Okay, questions for Mary. She'll take questions. There you go. There's a question right there. Oh, I thought I talked too long, so. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Larry Roth from Dalatara. Mark wanted me to ask you about the light, uh, uh, the lights in the community, about the leakage into um, the upper atmosphere or, um, or whatever. Okay. And, <laughs> That's the dark lights. Yeah, yeah um, in particular about Bellaterra or just? Well, I guess Bellaterra and yeah. I believe all, some of the other communities are. Yeah. So we have um, lighting standards in our code and the idea is for to have dark skies so we don't want, and particularly for commercial buildings, we don't want the light spilling out into the roads or spilling out into the neighbor's property. And so we put some lighting standards in our code and they're pretty strict. Now what we're finding is when these residential communities wanna go back and, and kind of retrofit a little bit, that the lighting standards are a little problematic because you can't quite, it, you would have to put a whole bunch of extra poles out there to keep the light dim, sort of counterintuitive. So we actually are looking at that. We got a consultant to, to look at our code and see if we need to, um, have a like a different standard for these residential communities retrofit. So we're looking at that now because we, we want to keep, you know, we I know in the even in the preserve we have people that think there's too much light and some people think there's not enough light. Right. We're just trying to get that balance. So we we just changed our poles that our our heads uh, after Irma yeah we all changed all the uh, the uh, the heads on them and yeah. we thought they were you know, approved by the village. Well, we're also working with FPNL because they, you know, I don't think they knew we had the standards too, so we're trying to work with them as well. Somebody else? Uh, go ahead, Rose. Uh, Rose and Lula. Um, the area that you refer to as downtown Estero, uh, doesn't that include the old post office? No, it's it comes right up and right right up next to the old post office, but it does not include the post office. And does it include the 1927 no. Estero Schoolhouse? No, it's, it's wraps around it's those. Wraps around yeah. those two? Yeah, okay. wraps around them. Bill, on the pink shirt, did you, uh, did you have a question? I just wanted to ask whatever happened to the hospital that we were going to build. Which one? No. Oh. Well, I, know. I see they're both building in Fort Myers now. Yeah. He, he's we don't want to talk next. next. You can grill him about that. Right. <laughs> Put him over the coals on that one. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about West Coconut all the way down to the new developments and the traffic. Yeah. You know, Stero did a traffic study. There's been many traffic studies. Yeah. A lot of concerns. Can you update 